Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It's Wednesday, March 27th, and we are really in it, gang. It is the heart of tax season, and I'm just so happy that people are finally getting on to this idea that uh, refunds are terrible, except that's not happening at all. You know why? Because everyone seems to always be happy. Oh, I got a refund. I got a refund. And according to the IRS, there's 71 and a half million returns that have been filed already. They have issued 49 million refunds. So obviously, my one woman plea to please, please, please stop getting a refund is not exactly working. Average refund right now is over 3,100 bucks. That's actually a, a pretty sizable chunk. And uh, so this makes me nuts. I know it is uh, something that many of you understand, but it's still this weird human nature where you're like, yay, I got a refund. And so uh, I went on the air yesterday on CBS Mornings in order to explain why refunds are a lousy deal, but also what you should do with your refund. So uh, I'm going to air the segment, come back around and talk about some other things that you can do with your refund. So here is the segment from CBS Mornings yesterday. Your anchors are Vladimir Dutier, Tony DeCopel, and Jerika Duncan. Good morning, Jill. Good morning. Always great to see you. So what are the top three things that you say people should be looking to spend their tax refund on? First of all, I like to call this the big three the because big three. they're the biggest three most important things in your financial life. Okay. One is to have an emergency reserve fund that can cover six to 12 months of your living expenses. Okay. Sounds like a lot, but it's very so good. So how much would you put out of that 3,000? I'm putting it all to that. Oh, and then, and, okay. and or if you have outstanding credit card debt or high interest debt, I maybe might split it between my emergency reserve fund and paying down high interest debt. Okay. Maybe number three would be, hey, let me put as much money as I possibly can into my retirement account. Those are your big three. Use your $3,100 to try to cover at least those first two and maybe number three. With an emergency fund, do you recommend putting it in a certain special savings? Uh, spe an anything that is earning interest. Just yeah. to remind everybody, when you got that refund, that was an interest-free loan to Uncle Sam. It's a terrible idea. But you you could have been earning 4 or 5% on that money. Instead, Uncle Sam was holding it for you and now giving it back oh, to you with no interest. So nice. One of the things I'm thinking about now, of course, is little Celine and college and beyond. Uh, talk to us about a 529 and why that might be a good option. I love 529 plans to save for college education because the money goes in and you've already paid tax on it, but it grows without taxation until your child or your grandchild goes to college. When the kid goes, takes that money out, there's no tax due. So 529 plans, the ones that are offered directly through your state, they often can have not just that great accumulation without taxes, but some states give you an incentive. They'll say, hey, will you have a state income tax break when you put money in? So check out your state's plan. People lucky enough to own a home often have a mortgage, and people who don't like debt will be uh, inclined to maybe pay down that mortgage with a refund. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend such a move? Okay, depends what your interest rate is on your mortgage. For those millions of people who have a sub-4% 30-year fixed rate loan, try not to pay down your mortgage. I know it's peace of mind. Mm -hmm. For those who have like the 6 or 7% loans that have been recently, they may want to start to pay some of it down. But again, those big three, that's your priority. Okay, so you guys all know when I tell you about the big three, you know about that. Um, the part of this segment that we did not get to was really a drill down into why people should be using their refunds to jumpstart retirement. You know, there's a lot of people who don't have retirement plans available to them. And for those folks, you really need to be using an IRA a Roth or a traditional. Now, of course, remember, the difference between the two is very simply when you pay taxes. With any traditional retirement plan, you get the tax deduction today. And then when you retire and you withdraw the money, the government taxes whatever you're pulling out at whatever your tax bracket is at the time. Now, the government does force you to take money out when you get to your 70s, and that's called a required minimum distribution. Now, meanwhile, a Roth is made, a, more, a Roth contribution is made with an after-tax dollar, no deduction today. But when you withdraw the funds in retirement, there's no tax that's due. And so our friend Ed Slot and other tax experts 
really want people to be using Roths. Why? Because even if you live in a high cost of living state, even if you've got a high current bracket, they are really worried that tax rates could rise in the future. And even if they don't, it's good to have some of that retirement money that's already been taxed. So obviously 3100 bucks into a retirement account would be great. But there's been another interesting question that I've started to field. And you know what always happens is I go on the air, I come off. And the camera men and women, the stage managers, they all start peppering me with questions. And the one that I got yesterday when I came off the air is like, hey, with the stock market so high, shouldn't I just wait until it goes down in order to put money in? Like I got my refund. This guy happened to get $12,000 refund. And I said, well, well, wait a minute. What are you investing for? What do you, and he, well, you know, like for retirement. Okay, well, well, if you're talking about decades in the future, uh, I'm not exactly sure that any of us knows when the stock market's going to go down for you. So how about just popping the money in and stick to that diversified mix of low cost index funds? You know, you're you're in basically investing it for 10, 20, 30 years. That makes sense. So anyway, I just I I'm always moved by this. Mark, people do love a a refund. I hate them so much. I really do. I haven't had a refund in many, many, many years. You know, I remember I told you this, and I think I've told this story on the air before, that the reason we knew that my father's identity had been hacked was that somebody claimed that he oh, he was due a refund and intercepted the money, at which point the IRS said, hey, wait a minute, this guy's been filing taxes for 50 years. He's never actually ever had a refund. <laughs> And that's how the and that's how he got flagged. So if you are wondering what to do with your refund, we have plenty of ways. You know, before we went on the air, Mark, we did have a fun thing, which is uh, Tony DeCopel said, well, Jill, come on. What would you do? Like, give us the irresponsible way to spend the money. So we talked about what would you do if you just wanted to blow thirty one hundred dollars? Mark, what would you do with your thirty one hundred dollars? Thirty one hundred dollars at this stage of my life. I would go buy some planters for my roof deck. Oh my God, that's hysterical. You could probably buy one really fancy one. or uh, the, But that that is a great one. I love that. I said, at first I was like, well, maybe I'd get a handbag, like one of those crazy, like Amanda type handbags. But then I was like, nah, that's... And then I decided would, I would spend it on tickets. Like I'd go see, I'd get a couple of great seats to a Beyonce concert or a Taylor Swift concert. It would be so much fun to do that. So that's what I would do the experience. I'd be all in on the experience. What would you do, listeners, jillionaires out there? I hope you're not all getting refunds. You know, truly, you could have been collecting 4 or 5% over the last year. And, and if you have gotten a refund, can you please change your withholding or change your quarterly estimates so it doesn't happen again next year? Can you please, pretty please, it would be so much better. The IRS has this neat withholding tool. It's a, the withholding estimator, irs.gov. So check it out. All right. If you've got tax questions, if you're looking for ways to blow a refund, or I mean, wisely invest your refund, give us a holler. Go to jillonmoney.com. Click the contact us button. Let us know if you would like to come on the air live with us. Mark does everything else. While you're on the website, you got to sign up for Jill on Money Live. That is our paywall. And it's a very low wall. And for $35, you have access to four quarterly live webinars and bonus video content. And you can go back and listen to or watch last year's webinars. It's all a great deal. So check it out. Don't forget to do something nice for someone else today. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening. And we'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow. 